Hello, hello, and welcome to some day zero testing for the brand new archetype, Silent Force, which absolutely will not have this name when it comes to the TCG, but that's what we're going to have to roll with for now. It joins the likes of Elswarm and Predap in very bad combinations that uh, don't work yet until we see the localization. This is a really cool ritual deck that has actually a lot to it, even in this first wave, and I think with a second wave this can actually very likely be a meta-relevant deck. Uh, I'm going to show you just some basic combo lines with a very basic version of the deck, but I'll talk about some of the engines and stuff you can maybe try out. Uh, but mainly that, we're just going to go through some simple lines as a day zero of testing with this deck. So we're going to start off here with a combo that starts with just the normal summon of the deck, Novox, the Silent Forcer Disciple. We're going to start by normal summoning her, of course, and activating the effect to get a Silent Forcing barrier from the deck placed face up. Uh, now, immediately, because we control Novox, our opponent cannot target any of our monsters of card effects. We are now immune to Imperm as long as this resolves. Uh, there's other ways to get this out, but basically, yeah, this is just our entire board is going to be immune to Imperm because we're only going to be summoning light monsters. Next, we're going to use the effect to add a Silent Force monster from our deck to our hand, and we're going to add Safira the Queen. This card's crazy. We're going to be using her effect to send herself from the hand of the grave, to send the ritual spell from deck to grave, and add our ritual monster. We can then use her effect in the graveyard to perform a ritual summon. The Novox can be used to fully pay the cost by herself, so we're just going to send the Novox to summon our Skull Guardian. On summon of Skull Guardian, we can activate the effect to add a monster, and the Novox, because it was sent to the graveyard before the Skull Guardian was summoned, can activate its effect to summon itself from the graveyard. So we can bring her back. Our Skull Guardian gains 2050 attack because Novox is on the fielder in the grave, and I now have an Omni Negate live during the opponent's turn or our own. We are now immune to Nibiru and things like that. And we get our Cerevis. Now, you could also get, instead here, get, if you have any other way to play, you probably want to get something like uh, the Cerevis main deck. Um, we currently can't summon it because we only have one spell in the graveyard, but this is all off of one card, so you very likely will. Uh, depending on if you have other stuff in your graveyard, you go for Cerevis, which gives you another interaction on your opponent's turn. Or you can just add Cerevis here, which is a targeting protection for your monsters if they do out the barrier somehow. So yeah, at the minute this is just a two untargetable monsters, a 4100 that is uh, basically Dragoon. This is one, it is an untargetable negate. It can still be destroyed, which I guess is pretty relevant. But it's a big body that's pretty hard to get over. And yeah, this is all off of one card. Next up, we're going to be using the classic broken engine that's in every ritual deck these days. We're going to be playing with Diviner plus any level 6 ritual. The ones I'm playing in here are Saphira and Benten. Benten does more, but this is just with the Saphira. We're going to go normal summon our Diviner and send Herald, which sets our Diviner to level 6, and we'll use a Herald to add our prayer. We can then use the prayer to trivia our Diviner to summon our 6 from hand, which triggers the effect of Diviner to summon a level 6 or lower fairy from deck, which our Novox is. This will trigger the effect of, uh, of Novox to get our barrier out. And then from there, we can go Barrier, add Saphira, Saphira Send, get our Skull Guardian, banish our Saphira to summon our Skull Guardian. Skull Guardian can add our Cerevis, and then we can summon the Cerevis because we have two copies of the Ritual Spell in the Grave. And now we have our Negate, which should be on 4100. We have our Saphira effect instead of Benten here. So Saphira gets a choice of effects, well, it was Ritual Summoned, which is in the end phase, we can either draw two and discard one, or we can hand loop our opponent for one, just like Chimera does, or add a Light from Grave to hand. Pretty much always you're gonna be going for the discard effect on the turn one, and just get your opponent down to four cards. And yeah, so we have on our opponent's turn the Cerevis to summon from our deck, we have our Omni Negate, and we have a Hand Rip, and our entire board is completely untargetable. Next up is going to be a bit more of a uh, lucky one. Uh, Pre-Prep and Prep are really powerful cards in this deck, so we're going to start with a Hand of Diviner and Pre-Prep. Obviously this is a pretty stacked combination, but yeah, we're going to show you just uh, how far this can get pure. 
So we're going to start by normal summoning our Diviner, of course. Diviner send Herald. Herald get Benton. And we're going to go free prep, adding our prayer, and adding Skull Guardian. We'll go prayer, tribute, diviner, and ben 10 to summon guardian, and then we'll go ben 10 effect, and guardian effect, and diviner effect. So we get to get another ben 10 from deck, summon a Novox from deck, and add a Sapphira. Now our Omni Negate is live, and we can get a barrier from deck, and our board is untargetable. We can go Sapphira effect to send prayer and add itself, then we can go her effect in the graveyard, should be the Benten to summon herself, and then we get Benten add another Diviner. After this, we can use the effect of the Barrier to add Seravis, and we can shuffle back the Pre Prep and the Prayer to summon Seravis. So, once again, we have our Omni Negate, we have our Sapphira Hand Rip, we have Follow Up for next turn, our board is untargetable, we have the Seravis summon from deck, and we have the Grave effect of Silent Forcing Prayer Live which is if any of our rituals leave the field by an opponent's card effect, we can banish it to special summon Seravis, Sapphira, or Skull Guardian from deck, ignoring summoning conditions. So if our opponent somehow outs some of our board, like the Skull Guardian, we can actually summon out another copy. Say our opponent Raigekis us here, we can use the effect of the spell to summon out a Skull Guardian, and because Skull Guardian was special summoned to our field, we can bring back the Novox and we'd have our Omni Negate back. So you don't necessarily lose everything, even if you have no protection here to board wipes. You still get your stuff back. Now there's other things you can go for here, but yeah, that's the basic and things you can access. You could go for some other options off of Benton, maybe you have some fairies, you could play Orange Light, I'm not in this list, but that's something you could do. Or you can maybe go for a Novox if you're hoping to use that on next turn to search the trap card in the deck, or search another copy of the spell if you're worried about being destroyed. There's a few options you can go by. Now we're just going to do a random test hand, just to demonstrate what you will do with a full hand of cards. We're going to start with the pre prep, of course. We'll get the prayer and probably here get the skull guardian. We're going to send our Sapphiris and prayer, add an Odd Eyes Pendulum Graph Dragon. Uh, yes, Odd Eyes Pendgraph is in fact a light dragon ritual, which is one of our only legal targets for all of our search effects, but it is completely searchable and it is a spell negate. And it also can search the ritual spells from deck or grave, so it's pretty good all around. There is some interesting text you can use to play this with some of the Nouvelle cards, as, so for example, Skull Guardian doesn't search only light monsters, it can search any warrior ritual monster, which means it can search three of the Nouvelle cards, and, and in Age of Overlord, the Nouvelles are getting a new monster that is a pen scale 8 that interacts with ritual summoning, so you could scale up with pen graph, and then you'd be able to special summon Sapphira or Seravis from hand. Uh, we're going to go for our pre here, which gets our Benton, and we can get our Prayer, which we sent off of the Sapphira. Just easy free recursion for prep here, it's very good. And now we have a full hand to play stuff with. We're getting a barrier, so make sure that our board isn't targetable, and we're going to get Novox. Uh, we're going to Sapphira, tribute the Novox, and summon our Guardian. Then we can summon the Novox and activate our Skull Guardian effect to add Seravis. We will then get the trap card from deck using Novox because we've already had the barrier in play. Now the trap lets us either recur some stuff, which is pretty useful in your opponent's turn or in your own turn to just get some recycling going, but uh, usually you're just going to use it for the second effect, which is that you can pop card your opponent control equal to the number of rituals you control. It does destroy itself when you do this, but it's pretty much all you're going to need out of it. It's more than an Icarus attack a lot of the time. So next we're going to be going for... We get our stats up. Next, we're going to be going for the prayer. We're going to tribute Benton to summon Sapphira. And then we're going to add Diviner. We haven't normal summoned yet. So we can now use our Diviner to send a Herald. We're going to add another Benten. And then we can use the ritual to tribute Benten and Diviner to summon Pengraph. Now we're just going to add a Diviner here. Now you can summon another Novox here if you're concerned about your opponent clearing one, uh, some kind of removal, uh, and you don't want to lose your Omni Negate. But here we don't really have the zones to afford to do that, so we're not going to do that. We are going to get out uh, by putting back our two spells, summon our Seravis from hand. And yeah, now we have our spell negate in the pen graph, which will then put itself in the scale and summon an Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon usually, or something else, there's a few options. Uh, Vortex will miss timing, but if you can somehow get uh, something like pen graph or any other pen in the extract, it is an Omni Negate. 
Uh, we have our Omni Negate in the form of Skull Guardian. None of these cards are targetable. Um, they can't attack Novox or Soravis. They can only attack our Rituals. We have a Hand Drip with Sephira. We can pop three cards our opponent controls during the main phase. We have Follow Up the next time with Diviner. We have a Summon from Deck with Soravis. And now I haven't shown it here because you're always summoning it from Deck. But the monster Soravis that you'll be summoning with this is a summon negate. It can't negate effects, but it can, you know, uh, it's essentially a sort of solemn strike. You can use it to negate link summons, synchro summons, things like that, or, you know, some pen summons even. So that effect can be pretty good to just sneak out um, when your opponent uh, starts playing and doesn't realize what Soravis necessarily does. And the Soravis will return itself to the hand to continue to play next turn and the Cerevis Ritual will also return itself to hand and turn itself into a targeting protection hand trap. Uh, you have your Grave Effect to, uh, if they remove any of your stuff, to summon something from deck, ignoring summoning conditions. And yeah, there's a, there's a whole lot of interaction here, and this is basically all in archetype, except for, you know, the pen graph. We didn't really use any generics, we didn't use any synchro summoning or anything. Didn't make a Beatrice, though you theoretically can. You know, you could have used the Sapphira and the Diviner to make a Beatrice or another rank 6, but I wanted the hand rip off of the Sapphira here. But it is definitely something you can think about. Let's take a look at the list. Right, so here's the list I was testing with there. So I just ignore the staples here. I'm thinking of trying to cut down. Obviously, we don't want to only be playing six interruptions here. There's definitely numbers you can cut down, but uh, yeah, you do that. Uh, in your own theory and stuff, uh, I'm not entirely sure what to cut down. I'm just like getting the main core of gameplay here. Um, as for the side here, you can just ignore it, except for a couple cards I was thinking about. Um, we can theoretically play Odd Eyes Gravity Dragon. Um, you would have to find another way to ritual summon it, of course, as this spell only summons light monsters, and the Sephira can only summon light monsters as well, and the Cerevis also can only summon lights. However, you can add it with Skull Guardian because it has any dragon ritual monster, not just a light, so you could theoretically play this as some sort of removal tool. I'm not really sure if it's just Cope. Uh, Drytron players can maybe tell me that. Uh, the other card I was thinking about is Balefire. Now, this is a Starry Night card, but it does have strange synergy with the deck. Our deck contains three level 7 light dragons. We have our Pendgraf, we have our Cerevis, and we have the main deck Cerevis. So if you're playing against a dark deck, theoretically, you can use this to add Pendgraf, or Cerevis, or Sage Cerevis, and if you already had Sage Cerevis, you can add whatever, but usually you'd add Cerevis, and you can just special him immediately if your opponent controls a dark monster, and now, on going second, you just have summoned this guy from deck, and if your opponent activates anything, you can just cheat out something else from deck, including a spell negate, or a summon negate. Now, this would uh, impact something like Unchained Link Summon or uh, IP. Uh, looking for the extra deck though, it's pretty just toolbox standard stuff for rituals or playing. So yeah, I think this deck's got a lot of, to it. it, has a lot of teeth, has a lot of combos uh, that are really, really good. Obviously it loses the same things ritual decks always lose to, but it is really insane that you can set up that uh, protection from nib in two or three summons, and a full board protection from targeting, just immune to imperm. Like say you open, Barrier plus Novox, you go activate Barrier, normal Novox, you can't imperm it, and it's just gonna get out of the trap. Trap gives you recycling and stuff. Uh, it's really, really crazy how much your plays are insulated against a lot of these common removals and interactions. So you're pretty much safe from Nib every time, you're pretty much safe from Imperm every time. So you gotta start worrying about cards like Droll, there isn't really any way to deal with that. You can still often end on something, you can end on the Cerevis, or on things like that. You'll probably have a Skull Guardian up before you get Drolled, so you can still end on a decent number of interaction. And you can definitely cut these numbers down to fit in some more hand traps and things like that. So there's definitely a lot to do here. Um, there's another couple engines you can think about. So I was talking earlier about the Nouvelles, uh, the level 6 and level 2 and level 4 Nouvelles are all warriors. They're not lights, so you can't summon them off these effects, but they can be added off of, say, prep. And then the uh, pend of the Nouvelle can special itself. Or if it is tributed, it can place it on the pen scale, and then you can add a ritual or recipe. Da, 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 da. So yeah, you can use this to scale up with pen graph. After you've used the spell negate, you can then pen summon out stuff like Cerevis and Sapphira. 
You then get to summon this from the pen zone, and then if you tribute it for a ritual summon, which you'll probably be able to very easily do, you'll have the card out in the extra for the inner gate of Vortex Dragon. That's a theoretical thing you do, or you could just play a higher or you could just play a much bigger Nouvelle package. I don't know what that would look like, but that's maybe something you could experiment with. And then there is a elephant in the room here in that you can play a Bissiel engine theoretically in here. There are a lot of sixes that you can already get access to. The benefit from tributing is obviously relevant. And it's very, very easy to get a lot of stuff in the graveyard for these. Now, uh, you would also be able to benefit off of banishing Sapphira to trigger Branded Regained to just draw a card and put her back constantly so you would never run out of Sapphiras. There's a lot obviously you can always do with uh, ritual strategies, like specifically I'm sure there's something Drytron can do here. It is kind of a lot worse for Drytron because for example with Medionis, uh, you would have to tribute two monsters to make Skull Guardian as it is a 2050 attack monster that uh, you cannot special Novox if you play Drytron with this stuff so you would have to, you would lose out on her grave effect. Uh, and you would lose out on the Diviner Grave effect. So, very much consider those. But that's what the deck looks like. This is Silence Force. Very much hoping it gets a better name. Thank you for checking out this very first day of raw testing with the deck, and I hope to get back to you soon with more. And very much I'm looking forward to what the second wave of this will look like in the next main set, which was three main sets away. It's a shame we weren't going to see this for maybe even next year, but it's cool. It's cool, and I'm very much looking forward to playing these cards. Thank you for watching.